so much for opening up this video. I really do appreciate it. Now, in the last few days, there's been considerable uproar about the protests at Pimlico Academy about their um, what do you call it? Their uniform and flying of the Union Jack flag. Well, I've got one question to ask the students at Pimlico Academy who are protesting about the flying of the Union Jack flag. How dare you actually complain about the flying of the Union Jack? Let me explain. I'm a British born, UK born and generation Indian. I have served in Her Majesty's Armed Forces, albeit in a very limited capacity. And I wanna ask you, how dare you have the audacity to complain about the Union Jack flag? Many of our forefathers bled, fought and died for that flag. If they didn't do so, you would not have the right to, to protest the way you are doing so. It must not be forgotten that many people and men, uh, have actually served in the American Armed Forces and many of them died during the First and Second World War. Had they not done so, you would not have the right to actually protest the way you're doing. Had Adolf Hitler won the Second World War, you would not be here in the UK. It's basically that simple. Now, one thing you have to remember about Adolf Hitler, think of his party, the General Democratic, sorry, the German Democratic National Socialist Party. Yes, Nazi is an abbreviation for National Socialist. People forget that. Now look at the basic genocidal killers of the 20th century. Chairman Mao, Pol Pot, Joseph Stalin, the five greatest killers. Next second only to Adolf Hitler. What they have in common? They're all members of socialist parties. Just bear that in mind. I defy you to go to Cuba or a communist country where and make such protests and see what happens, okay? You wouldn't have the right to make such protests in, in such countries. Now, that's the first thing about the flag. Secondly, I understand that you are complaining about the uh, there are some restrictions on hijab wearing, niqab wearing and burqa wearing. Just be grateful that you live in a country that you can wear the hijab, where you can wear the burqa and you can wear the niqab. I defy you to go to Cameroon, Chad, Congo, Niger, Turkey or Tunisia. In those countries, you can be fined a lot of money for wearing those garments. In some cases, you can go to jail. Just bearing in mind, those are Islamic countries. I didn't mention any European country that banned those garments. Those are Islamic countries. Always makes me laugh when people uh, talk about you know, the uh, Islamic right to wear the burqa and say it's an, an integral part of their religion. I just mentioned these countries have banned it on security grounds. They never give me an answer to that question. Now, into, uh, the thing is, school uniform is a really good idea. Let me talk about the hair, the issue about the long hair. It's for your own safety because that way the teacher can, can tell who's paying attention in class and who is not, okay? I went to a private school. I irrespective, didn't care about anything. It, you had to have short back and sides, okay? Everyone had, had the same. The only exception was Sikhs, but they tied their hair back in a turban. Now, the other thing here is, is very important. They want, the, 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 the restriction on dreadlocks is to make sure that they can see the, the student's eyes and basically make sure everyone's paying attention. It also means you can dig it. it's for your own safety, so you can see where you're going. It's that simple. The other thing here is, in terms of wearing um, coloured hijabs, no one's stopping you from wearing a hijab. They just want everyone to wear more black, as far as I can imagine. Well, that's just uniform. School uniform is a good idea. It goes a long way to stopping school bullying due to clothing. They can't, no one says, you're poor, you can't afford this clothing, or you haven't got this, you haven't got that in terms of clothing. Everyone wears the same, so it brings this idea, respect that. Now, just one thing you need to remember, let's put the shoe on the other foot. If you went to, if the, if the English went to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, any African country, would you get free schools? No. Would you, would you get free national health service? No. Would you get tax credits or social security benefits? No. So it's just a little bit of respect. Remember, if you were in those countries, you had to pay for your education. Here in the UK, you're getting for free. 
in many countries, people would get, pay a fortune to get their education. Just bear that in mind. You're getting it free of charge. Be grateful, okay? Let me tell you of the Hindu teaching on education. If you see your teacher and God walking down the street, who do you pay your respects to first? Logic will say, God, no. The Hindu teaching says, you pay your respects to your teacher first because your teacher told you who God was. Conversely, if you see your mother, your, your God and te your teacher walking down the street, who do you pay your respects to first? Firstly, your mother. She raised you and paid your teacher's fees. Then your teacher, your teacher who told you who God was, then God. Okay, now the other thing here is, as I said, you don't have, um, you're very lucky to get these things for free. If you go to countries such as in Africa or in Asia, to pay for your education. You get free healthcare here. You go to those countries and you get cancer. Guess what? You go and you have to have to pay for it yourself, remortgage your house or go without. Just bear that in mind. Okay. Now, the thing here is what you need to be doing is making a positive contribution to UK society. Don't follow these idiots who are misguiding you. Look at some good examples. Look at John Barnes, the, that great footballer who played for Liverpool. I will never forget the day that he started playing one of his first games for Liverpool. There were some Liverpool supporters who didn't want a black player playing for them. But after a magnificent performance, and after scoring that second goal, the Liverpool supporters were chanting out, Johnny Barnes, Johnny Barnes. I remember when Stanley, Stan Collymore played his first game for Liverpool. Some Sheffield Wednesday supporters from the other side were giving him all sorts of racial abuse and also saying, what a waste of money. He scored a screamer from 30 yards. Shut them up. Look at Sadio Mane, a black player playing for Liverpool. He's also a Muslim. He actually is a philanthropist. He gives lots of money to charity. Look at the other great examples. Tina Turner, Oprah Winfrey, Daley Thompson, Nelson Mandela, one of the greatest politicians ever. Look at the actor, Amir Khan. Look at the greatest squash player who played, who walked this earth, Jahangir Khan. Look at the great boxer, Muhammad Ali. Look at one of my favorite footballers at the moment, Muhammad Salah. Okay, the, we call him the Egyptian king. Feared by, any, by many defenders up and down the country, respected by all, loved by Liverpool supporters. Now, the thing here is, look at the Sikhs. I don't see them complaining like you're complaining. The Sikhs are their Sikh script to tell you to integrate and fully make a full positive contribution to the country you're living in. I don't see them complaining. I don't seem to see them pulling down statues and things like that. The simple reason being, today is April the 4th. In nine days' time, it will be the anniversary of the Amritsar massacre. If you look at the um, a quick YouTube uh, search on this, you'll see an extract from the movie Gandhi, where General Dyer opened fire on innocent people. They've never torn down the monument to that because they want to make sure that people never forget it. What about the Jews? The Jews have never, ever... Um, torn down Auschwitz or anything like that to make sure people don't forget. I've been to Checkpoint Charlie. I've been to Auschwitz. They're absolutely horrific. But the thing is, look at this. The Jews have been discriminated in every way you can imagine. Sadly, six million people that we know of were killed in the Second World War by Hitler's concentration camps. However, look, look what they've done. Depending on regional variation, they own between one-tenth and one-fifth of Western economies, okay? But very recently, well, not recently, before lockdown, I had the great honour to be invited to a Jewish wedding of one of my students. Her husband is Jewish. He has 45 properties, all Jewish families. At that, the, the reception was held at a hall owned by a Jew. The caterer was Jewish. His solicitor, accountant, will writer and insurance broker were there. They're Jewish. The caterer was Jewish. All the presents were bought from a Jewish supplier. Okay. The suits came from, from a Jewish supplier. The wedding dress by a Jewish uh, bride, bridal person. Okay. On top of that, the flowers, the flowers came from a Jewish person. Can you see a pattern developing here? They recycle money in their communities. And guess what? It develops considerable wealth. On average, between two thirds and three quarters of all students at Harvard Business School and Harvard Law School are of Jewish background. What does that tell you about these wonderful people? 
yeah, they're not tearing down uh, Auschwitz or things, things like that, but make a very positive contribution to our society. I'm of Hindu background, and every year I invite them to Diwali, our, our festival of lights. In turn, they invite me to Hanukkah, which is their festival of lights. So it's great. Okay. But the thing is, if you really are unhappy with the UK, then I've heard on the grapevine, and I think these are, are probably untrue, that you can you take a one-way ticket to, uh, to Uganda, surrender your passport, and you're given Ugandan citizenship. Now, I suspect that's not true. I suspect that's not true. But, you know, you, you can do this. But, you know, will you have freedom and democracy that you have here in the UK? Would you have the right to protest the way you are doing now? Would you get free national health? Would you get benefits? Would you get social security? Would you get tax credits? Would you get um, financial contribution to your uniform? No. Would you get free schooling? No. Okay. And if you want to see a case, a classical case of someone who thought it was better abroad and is regretting it, look at Shumi Mabegum. She went over to Syria thinking she'd have the wonderful life. She's regretting it now, isn't she? Okay. So what can you do about this? Well, go below. <clears throat> I've got a fact sheet. Okay, and on that fact sheet, you can see there's a few things I want you to do. But in a nutshell, this is what I want you to do. If you really are concerned about slavery, when you go shopping, look for the fair trade symbol. Okay, and buy fair trade and buy ethical. That goes a long way. Um, if we all buy ethically, we can get rid of slave labor and all those horrible things. Okay, great. Number two. If you are in the UK, on the 6th of May, we have council elections. Don't vote Labour. If you are in uh, London, please do not vote for Sadiq Khan. They pander to these people. Let's get rid of them. Okay. And everything what you can do, okay, uh, is basically subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.